so hello everyone my name is uh, arjun kelaya uh, i have i have had a long journey <laughs> so i will try to make it very short for you but uh, regarding the snapshot like i have done i have completed my graduation from the same college where you are sitting right now uh, in 2010 bj medical college and i completed my internal medicine residency as well from the same institute in 2016 after that i have worked as a uh, as a senior resident uh, assistant professor and private practitioner as well for 5 years and uh, apart from that i have collectively uh, done 2 years of research experience and uh, i have published 8 article as well and currently i am working as a postdoctoral research fellow in gastroenterology at beth israel dekonas medical center boston and uh, uh, thankfully i matched at uh, mount avon hospital this year which is affiliated with uh, harvard medical school in internal medicine residency so <coughs> where did i start like let's see how good a medical student i was during my mbbs years uh, believe me it's not a straight journey so first of all i didn't know why i took medicine i just did because i could and uh, i never figured out why i had to mug up so many things without understanding and so i lost interest in medicine during my mbbs years and i failed in my pathology and pharmacology university exam as well so you would think like why am i telling you this so you will understand so i was basically a back venture you can say <laughs> and so where come the question uh, like when and why i did want to come to the united states so <laughs> the silly reason was all of my best friends were going at the time in 2010 but i had some gut feeling as well and some inexplicable pull that uh, i may be f- uh, better off there and uh, as i'm a very uh, technologically enthusiastic guy so i wanted to do something in that field as well so i thought uh, maybe i can uh, jump or merge into the field uh, in united states because i don't think it is possible to do in india uh, i may be wrong but yes so i did an elective uh, during my internship i took uh, cs uh, clinical skill exam which is discontinued right now but without preparation and i failed so basically i was back to square zero because i haven't even started the preparation for steps yet and i failed the cs exam so because i was under so much pressure of this guilt i decided to do whatever i could do free and early which was neat pg so but as everyone knows like nobody can get into the residency without studying so it was it was also a struggle and uh, i had never studied before so i had to start from scratch struggle a lot and after many failures i managed to get into the medicine residency and it was about the time uh, things uh, started to change how so this was uh, during 2013 to 16 i worked my ass off like i worked really hard uh, during my residency and yes you know we uh, in civil hospital we have so much patient workload so i didn't study much again but i saw and managed a lot of patients in our civil hospital and that competency made me confident in my abilities so after completing my residency i uh, like did uh, ap ship uh, i worked as an sr i worked as a private practitioner afterwards but but uh, i was feeling okay uh, it was not bad but it was it was not that fulfilling as well so and there was always a bug in my mind that i have an unfinished task uh, which i left uh, during my internship years so finally so you, it was the time for your assembly to be reloaded and uh, in to the end in the end of 2018 i just dis- i decided that like i will start my uh, journey and actually start studying for step 1 now due to residency and all the clinical practice i was more confident in my abilities i decided to start studying and but i was aware that like old methods would not work because i was not a very good medical student back in my days so i i had that awareness so i s- searched over the internet uh, and i found a course it is a very interesting course learning how to learn on coursera uh, by professor barbara oakley i highly recommend everyone to go through this especially who are uh, 
who are struggling with scores and studying and like they doubt themselves kindly go through this like before you start anything any study so this course was really helpful it really changed uh, the way i think about learning and uh, it changed completely my like it completely changed my method so i started studying with job i was uh, doing uh, ap ship at the time and then sr ship but it was very slow and very very slow so i realized that i it would take me 3 years just to take step 1 so i decided to leave my job and the struggle again started so leaving a job it was a very tricky situation and nc feeling i get uh, like anyone can get self doubt after earning for years and then suddenly you just leave the job and start studying exclusively it was very tough and it took me almost 13 months to study for step 1 properly because i was out of my graduation uh, for almost 14 years when i started uh, step 1 again not graduation but my first year let's say 2004 to 2018 so then then again during my preparation pandemic hit and i my exam got delayed for another 6 months so finally i was able to take step 1 in 2000 2020 and uh, i got 252 so finally some relief it was a good news so but <coughs> i underestimated the beast uh, which was coming in my way step two so i underestimated the exam i thought uh, like based on everyone's advice like you could take this in like two months or so i thought i may take uh, i may prepare for two months and apply for the match in september as well that I could not do for another year so it was not happening so in a meanwhile struggling with uh, struggle with COVID was going on in my family like I was kind of sole doctor in my family and everybody like I used to manage a people where to admit where to how to treat like whom to consult and everything so it was a stressful time then there was a time for a gamble like it was very interesting so I was just studying peacefully for step two, and uh, but the time of match came, so I applied for, I applied to sixty program just for practice, like just a formality because I, that's I just wanted to take a chance, but I didn't take step two at the time. I got an invite without step two, and I interviewed at the program in January. Even at the time, I didn't take, uh, I haven't not, uh, I had not take step two yet and uh, just to be eligible for that particular match and for that one program i had to take step two f like with only 65 percent of bubble completion which was first part so 35 percent was unseen so it was in a gamble i thought like i maybe i could save a year uh, uh like a large a huge amount of money for us clinical experience and everything so but it didn't work i did not match and I got relatively low score uh, compared to my step one, which was 253. So I was, was I disappointed with my score? Yes. Was I disappointed that I did not match? Yes. But did I regret that? No. Because I took a calculated decision at the time and I believe decisions are just that, decisions. Like they are not right and wrong and we should not try to make them right and wrong in hindsight and worry about the what-if scenarios. So finally life goes on and uh, after a period of mourning I decided to move on. I tried to get a, a US clinical experience because I, didn't, I only had an elective 10 years back. So I did two months of externship at uh, Heart and Vascular Institute, uh, Detroit, and one month of observership at uh, Mount Auburn Hospital. And uh, got a sudden opportunity by chance uh, for a research fellowship at Beth Israel Deconus Medical Center, which is affiliated with Harvard Medical School. And it's a big hospital. So I got simply lucky because I was a good resident during my time and I was very nice and helpful to someone who was my past mentor and the person believed in me. So she just uh, recommended me without even without me even asking and I just got an interview. So she is my current mentor, Dr. Daryl Lau. She is uh, Associate Professor of Medicine in Harvard, Harvard Medical School and uh, I work on with her, under her, under her guidance. I learned a lot 
and uh, C specifically works in hepatitis B and like gastroenterology and hepatology topics. But uh, I, I got a chance to work with her and uh, believe me, it was a like huge learning experience. Uh, what I did in research, I did translational research, which is like in between between basic science, a lab work and clinical research, it, which is in between thing, the connecting link. I, I, I wrote clinical review articles, I learned lab work, uh, how to process samples, how to store them and everything. Uh, I participated in journal club, we critiqued the various articles that, pub, that got published uh, recently. And we also saw patient in, we are currently seeing patients in outpatient settings. So it was an ongoing clinical experience as well. So basically it worked out really well for me, the research fellowship. And there is, it is an interesting observation because uh, currently where I match the, uh, the Mount Auburn Hospital, I, I am seeing like more than 70% of my co-interns are postdoctoral research fellow. And uh, many of the prestigious programs, university hospitals, they take uh, these people uh, who have some research experience of one or two years and doing some postdoctoral research fellowship in probably any of the branches. Uh, for any of the uh, various institutes, like there are so many. So I believe they were, this research fellowship can work as a platform to jump onto like some higher uh, play, uh, like prestigious places like uni affiliated program or university programs, maybe. So yeah, this is just my observation. And my mentor was mentor is so so helpful that she helped me with my med preparation as well. Like she uh, mentored me for interview, she helped me with my CV application and like guided me throughout my journey. And yeah, so but still the struggle was not over. Struggle. <laughs> so it was new country. There was visa issue. I there was a struggle to learn research because I did not have that kind of experience doing that in India and it was a struggle to live alone as well and on and, and I was on loan so it was tough and it I also had to prepare and apply for match while doing everything else so I struggled a lot I learned a lot met so many friends and I enjoyed a lot as well but I decided to go all in like I told uh, myself that I will give only one proper chance uh, to myself and I will do whatever I could do in my power to get the best possible position I can get and I gave my everything and Zishan Bhai I especially uh, I should I must mention him that he, he helped me improve my interview skills tremendously like I was so bad at it I didn't even know that I was so bad so I applied very broadly, uh, got 11 interviews from upper mid to mid to mid lower tier programs like it was a very broad spectrum and uh, I applied very broadly because I didn't know what was the strength of my application like and I wanted to like I did not wanted I did not want to leave anything to chance like I wanted to take chance in mass general as well and like smallest program as well so I don't so because I don't want to uh, have any kind of regrets so uh, but anyway, I couldn't do everything which I planned to do and burned out in December. So I kind of stopped working afterwards, like looking for more interviews, but still I got a good number. So I'm fairly fortunate and grateful for that. Finally, once I submitted my rank order list, I felt relieved. Uh, I took, I believe that I did everything I could do for the match. And I took two months of vacation and where when I traveled a lot, I, like uh, for two months all over the India. And I opened my match result in, guess where? Goa. So yeah, it luckily it worked out well. Otherwise it would have been a, like very disappointing <laughs> journey. But I matched my number one, uh, like top uh, number one uh, rank order program Mount Auburn Hospital it is a Harvard Medical School affiliated teaching hospital and so finally the what what is it like what are the take-home messages from this uh, longest journey so first and foremost the journey is not always smooth and straight like even if we see afar like someone's journey like oh he or she has reached somewhere like so high place but it is not like that like they have seen lots of ups and downs and majorly downs in during their journey 
second i i really believe in this always focus on process not the outcome like i always advise advise my friends my students and everyone like always believe uh, like try to give your 100% uh, and like try to focus on your preparation not the outcome like what would be the result don't worry about it just focus on your preparation and try to do as best as you can and good things will come to you i 100% believe that and take one thing at a time like this journey is so long and had so many components so if you think about everything simultaneously exams course us clinic experience research publication electives and everything journey financial you will get definitely overwhelmed and you will not be able to move forward and make progress in your journey so it is always good to have a gross timeline make a growth like where you want to be in in like in like uh, in a, like in months or years uh, timeline let's say but uh, when you start on something suppose you are uh, studying for step 1 just focus on step 1 don't worry about us clinical experience simultaneously like because you will not do uh, any of them good so yeah another thing is learn to introspect and take responsibility i think this is very important what do i mean by that like why i failed in cs because i took it lightly and didn't prepare well why i lost interest in medicine during my mbbs years because i didn't give enough efforts to develop an aptitude for it why i took so much time to pass the steps i lacked a uh, good baseline i lacked good base discipline and due to being obsessive about my preparation it took a more time for me so another important thing always take advice from someone who has already done what you want to do because there always will be naysayers and i my advice is just ignore them because this journey is all about your grit and conviction if you believe in yourself and if you are certain that you will reach by doing like by your own method your certain way then just do it like don't listen to naysayers tips for matching i think better people have spoken about it but still i have a few points to add try to get us clinical experience where there is already a desired residency like i tried to get into mount auburn second uh, work during those clinical experience properly like i have seen people doing just checklist thing uh, like j- j- just uh, move around and like just show up and that's it but if you show up and you work hard and pe- then people will appreciate it and that will be reflected in your letter of recommendation so when you get the usc make the most out of it by being most proactive and another important thing is like make every aspect of your application impeccable like everything email your cv your personal statement your interview skills uh, anywhere anywhere you are presented like it should be as impeccable as possible because you never know what would work in the match and, and what would uh, get the eye of the like selection committee or anything reach out to everyone ask for help nothing bad in that and help everyone because you will definitely get help in return lastly how did i get lucky so many times like i got extensive just within a week when i wanted to do because a friend believed in me i got an opportunity to do research in a prestigious institute why because a past mentor believed in me i did i was able to do unpaid research in an expensive city like boston why because a friend uh, believed in me and supported me so many things happened with me because i put myself out there ask for help and help someone in need whenever i can so the credit you build over the years makes people believe in you and support you and that comes from being kind to everyone and helping people so if you take one thing from this talk is be kind be grateful thank you i am really grateful to very important people in my life my wife chinal my parents my mentor my past mentor and so many friends that i could not put the photos of thank you very much